Okay, we've all been waiting for this moment to, to happen. It's been a hard week for me at work. I, I know I keep saying that, but it's been, you know, uh, at work we just got into um, a season and it's, it's becoming very, very hectic. So I've been looking forward to encountering this mini boss that I've been thinking about for, for a few days now. So here we are, our brave adventurers. They are still at the bonfire because we need to talk about a few things that happened in between the previous episode and this one. And then we will continue our journey and hopefully we will defeat uh, Boreal Outrider Knight mini boss. Let's look at the mini. It's not really a mini, it's a gigantic mini, but they look fantastic and will look awesome when painted. All right, we'll discuss that briefly in just a moment. But let's talk about our heroes first. What I decided to do is to use one of the sparks that I had. I had three, now it's down to two, to basically refresh everything on our, on our boards, including this. So there we are. We are ready for, for the encounter with, with the Boreal Knight. Everything is refreshed, uh, our equipment is upgraded, so there we are. Let's talk about the our mini boss, Boreal Outrider Knight. Okay, 26 health, 13 heat up <coughs> uh, threshold, 2 physical defense, 3 magical defense, and his starting uh, AI deck is uh, consists of 4 cards. We'll talk about that shortly, but before we do that, Let's talk about his um, ability, which is called Ice in His Veins. Uh, the knight never gains frostbite tokens or stagger tokens. Mm. <laughs> As if that was the case with our poorly upgraded equipment. Well, Warrior is somewhat, you know, he has progressed with his equipment. But our Cleric, which I was hoping to improve several bits and pieces, um yeah we failed so we found a lot of equipment over the course of two tier one encounters and two tier two encounters but nothing outstanding and nothing that we could really afford we have several pieces upgraded for our warrior but here it is our boreal boreal outrider knight let's build his uh, ai deck there are five cards to choose from I'm shuffling that to make it random. So let, let's pick four at random. Let's put that one aside. Shuffle these. And we're ready. All right. Over <coughs> all of our four encounters, we managed to come across four tombstones, which allow us to have a peek at um, one card each, respectively, for the, uh, for the, for the gravestone. So let's use this one to have a look. Sweeping Shrike. All right, this is a range one, dodge one, um, activation, physical attack for five in three arcs. Okay, and then retreats. Okay, away from hero with threat token, with aggro token. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Right, tombstone number two is backhand slashes. Ooh, we don't like that one already because it's got the repeat icon. So our mini boss will perform these this sequ sequence twice per activation. Ooh. Okay, so we know what they are. We have a sweeping strike and backhand slashes. Okay, let's put these back. Shuffle them again. Okay, and we're ready to begin. Our heroes enter the arena through the entrance. And I think what we're going to do is something like this. And we'll give the <clears throat> aggro token to our cleric. Shall we? Yeah. Why not? 26. AI deck. 
our mini boss, his um, front arc center is pointing towards this direction, which is a correct setup. He starts, of course, on his uh, special node. And there we are. Okay, let's do that then. Let's see if we can defeat Boreal Outrider Knight. Round one, fight. <laughs> um, Leaping Frost. Ooh, it's the one that we saw, isn't it? So, first action that he's going to make is attack um, the nodes in his front arc and in his right arc. So, basically, these four. Okay, nothing there. So, no damage goes through and no frostbite effect is um, applied to any of our heroes. However, his second activation says leap towards. Um, hero with aggro token and push him or her out of that node. So Boreal Outrider will leap here, will we'll keep the facing that it had uh, before it started its leap movement. Oops, um, so it was like this. Now where do we want to be pushed? I think we will be pushed um, where is he attacking? He's attacking his front and his right. So I'll stay there. Okay. So he does it all again because of that, <clears throat> because of that um, repeat icon. So he attacks his front arc and his right arc. Nobody there. So nobody got hurt. So then he jumps again at the hero with aggro token and I choose to be pushed in that direction over there. All right. And there you go. This is his first activation. It wasn't that bad. Let's see what happens now. So we have the mm, first action token, first turn token or first activation token. What, what, what's it called? I need to look it up on our warrior. So our warrior takes over the threat token, the aggro token. <clears throat> and what options do we have? We need to go in and start attacking. So as you saw on the activation card, the weak arc is the one on the left, which is this one. So our warrior will move in to the left. Okay. And we'll start attacking. We'll start attacking with his battle axe, so two black dice for the battle axe and one bl black dice for attacking from from uh, the weak arc. So three, let's have a look. We have three damage, two is blocked, two, two uh, physical damage, re uh, resistance, so 25. Now we will spend two stamina points to activate our pierce shield attack with two black dice and a third one for attacking the weak spot. And we attack for plus one as a result of us upgrading the shield with a titanite shard. So two is blocked, one goes through, 24. Right, we also have an option here to attack with our Cestus. If we spend three stamina points, we can uh, attack with two black dice without taking the Cestus out of the backpack. So that would put us, uh, that would put us uh, here. Mm, not sure what's in there. I don't think it's worth risking. I wounded uh, slightly the uh, Outrider Knight for two damage. Not fantastic, but uh, you know, yeah, I'll, I think I'll finish my activation right here. Okay, so the second AI card for the night is Chilling Thrust. Okay. So he moves to towards the hero with the threat token and then attacks the hero with four magical defense, applying uh, Frostbite. Okay, so what do we want to do? I think we will push him out of the node for free, then turn around 
move one, push him there, turn around, move two, push him there, okay, and attack him for four magical damage, okay. Uh, a warrior can only defend magical damage with one black dice. So look, oh, it's two, it's good. So it's just two damage that goes through. Okay. Right, so it's a cleric's turn now. It's our cleric's turn now. So she takes the aggro token. The weak spot for the knight is uh, is his rear arc, this one. So I can move in for one. I don't have a frostbite. Oh, hang on a minute. Sorry for that. He gets the frostbite for being attacked with magical damage, of course. Right, but the cleric, she doesn't have any frostbite, so she can move in for one and then attack with her mace. Do you know what? But before we do that, I think we will actually equip a chime, use it for zero stamina to heal one, move in for one and stay at the back, spend two stamina points to attack with two black dice and a third one for being in the weak spot and we attack for three, only one damage goes through but as a result of that we can pass the threat token to a warrior, okay? So if this card tells the knight to uh, target hero with aggro token, it will be the knight instead of our cleric. Hmm, is there anything else we can do? I don't think there is, to be honest. No. All right, let's have a look. Backhand slashes. All right. So what does it say? It says move one towards the closest hero. So who's the closest? Closest right now is our cleric. Okay, because uh, she's at the same node as as the knight. So if that's the case. We need to push you out for three. It was like this, wasn't it? So we push you out for three, and they're actually both equal distance. If that's the case, we will go after the hero with the threat token on him or her. So we move one, push you out, like so. Okay. Uh, and then we will attack the front and the left arc, which is this, 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 this and that. Okay, these two, four, five nodes. Actually, to be honest with you, if I get to choose, I want to be there. Is it legal though? You know, if he moved, I was here, he moved there. And he pushes me one, so I get to choose. So he pushed me there, right? And then he attacks his node in the front and on his, to his left, right? So these, right? So that was his first activation. He doesn't attack me. So he then turns around, faces me again, moves in. Okay, like so, pushes me out over there, okay, and attacks the arc in the front and to the left, these. So he doesn't do anything to me. Is it, is it legal though? Is it legal? Hmm. Or should he push me? there. That's quite interesting. I need to look it up. 
to, just to make sure, because if I get to choose in which direction he pushes me, then... Hmm. Okay, I'll play it like that. If that's wrong, then we'll replay uh, the entire encounter again to make it right. All right? But for the time being, I think it's... Uh, I'm not playing it incorrectly, to be honest with you. So no one is hurt, okay? So, um, whose turn is it now? Hmm. <clears throat> I think it's a warrior's turn now, because it was a cleric who performed her attack when she was here. And she passed the aggro token to a warrior who could push twice. Yeah, that's correct. Our warrior refreshes two stamina. Okay. Um, he has frostbite on him. So if I want to move in, if I want to move in, uh, you will see me do that quite a lot just to make sure that and learn and adjust to. Um, to this fantastic system. I think it's great. It's kind of confusing and, and, and quite awkward to begin with, but once you realize how to um, think about it, how to wrap your, wrap your um, thoughts around it, it's, it's quite, quite a nifty, quite a, quite a nice system. So this spot right there. So I'll move in for one. Stamina. Now uh, where is it? One stamina, and again, I will attack with my battle axe plus one black dice for the weak spot. And we attack for four minus two is two damage, so down to 21. Okay, then we add another two like that, and we attack with our shield for plus one. Okay, and it is two plus one is three, so just one damage down to 20 okay and now we could go ahead and risk it for free stamina no i won't do that no <laughs> no no i think that's that's uh that's uh that's quite good enough what we've already done we don't need to hurry there's no timer on it all right sweeping strike so what he does actually he will first attack in in this arc, something like that. So this node, these three, and these node, if they existed, if the tile was big enough, these would have been hit. And then what he does, he he moves away one from hero with the aggro token. So, how I would play it. Now again, is this correct? I would push him out, <laughs> like that. He needs to get rid of that, sorry for that. Then, the way the retreat movement action for the bosses work is that the center of, her, of their rear arc needs to be pointed towards the node adjacent to the boss, which is the farthest from the hero with aggro token. So which one would it be? This one or this one? This one. Okay, so like that. So he moves away like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will not turn them face down until I activate my, my cleric. She heals two stamina. And what should she do? Mm. What should she do? Mm. I think she, before she does anything, she will unequip the chime. Mm. Because she has the threat token on her, she doesn't have frostbite, so she could move for two and attack him. Hmm, for free, that would be five. Oh, that's quite, quite uh, challenging, but maybe we should risk it. 
we have all our tokens flipped on the bright side. What is his uh, weak spot? That's his weak spot in this turn. Okay, if that's the case, then I will go one. Let me just try it out. For, z for nothing, for one, for two stamina, then for three stamina. Yeah, let's do it. So two stamina for movement. I'm there. Now three stamina for the mace attack that allows me to attack with two black dice and one additional as a bonus for attacking from the weak spot and transfer the aggro token to and there we go we attack for four two gets blocked so two goes through and that's 18 health points remaining okay we flip it face down let me clear the board. Whew. All right. Um, what was that? Can you guys remember? I can't. Uh, I was paying attention to something else. Okay, so it is Leaping Frost. So basically what happens, uh, he attacks the arc in front. So these two, an arc in the back. So this one and this one. So these four, including her. Thankfully, she's got her um, shield equipped. So what he's going to do, he's going to attack her for four physical damage. She's blocking with two black dice and she blocks for three. So just one damage goes through, which is fantastic. Okay, now what he's going to do he will leave her there and jump, leap onto him like that and push him out. But where do we want to put it? Does it really matter? It does. It does. Um, so this attack also um, inflicts frostbite. Talking of which. And now he pushed him out. Okay. So he now... Okay, so I want to be there. I don't want to get hit. Because he's facing that direction. So he attacks this node. Plus he attacks that node. He does not attack the nodes in the back or the ones on this side. Okay, so that's his first second activation, right? And then he jumps again, like so, and pushes uh, a hero with the aggro token on him out of that node but does not inflict frostbite on, on our warrior because he, he was not hit by any of the attacks. Only the cleric was. Wow, fantastic. I love it. Love how it plays out. Mm -hmm. mm. By the way, I'm finishing my Talisker 10 years old. I think I showed you this bottle in one of the Descent um, videos and I think it was somewhere over here about a week ago now it's down to here and I think we will finish it by by the end of this weekend and by the way this is Saturday evening when we're enjoying our time off immensely as you can see yeah Talisker an okay-ish whiskey uh, for decent money yeah all right <clears throat> so whose turn is it now it was I think it's um, our warriors turn now isn't it yeah it is it is it is so let's just make sure which uh, which arc is 
our weakest it's this one yeah so he moves in for one yeah and attacks with his battle axe for two and that gets blocked oh forgot to uh, refresh this but i will pay two stamina for my shield and attack again we attack for four plus one that's five minus two is three so we reduce him down to 15 all right we're getting closer and closer to his heat up threshold now are we going to risk it for three stamina no no i won't okay we're slowly withering him down so his next activation is chilling thrust okay so what he does he will move two towards the hero with aggro token push them out twice and then attack them with uh, him with four magical attack and apply frostbite so what i'm going to do i will push you out there free of charge <laughs> for free and then turn around towards you move in there push you there that was our first move second move okay i'm there um and i'm attacked with four magical damage you may recall that uh, our warrior's magical defense is only one black dice, which is one, and we get hit for three. And this is actually a very good positioning because this is within two. Within two of our cleric, who will now equip her chime and drop the aggro token on the floor. <laughs> She will equip the chime, heal two, spend the three, okay, heal for three, our warrior who is within range of two, which is a legal move. Um, are we going to move anywhere? No, because we have the frostbite on us, so I'll stay here, get rid of frostbite, and this is actually quite dangerous for us. I don't really like the odds of that because I can't recall if there is a card that specifically says to target the... Oh, come on. I can't remember. Shall we risk it? Because if there is a card in there saying that I should target the hero with aggro token and deal some damage, she only has three damage left. Um, and her chime equipped. Shall we drink the Estus flask just to be on the safe side? Yeah, I'll do it. You know, I chickened out. <laughs> I'm a coward, you know. So there you go. I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> I'm not afraid anymore. All right, let's see what it was. <laughs> Okay, so he will move one towards the hero who's closest, attack for four, apply frostbite and do it all again. So he turns around, moves one, pushes me right there and attacks these nodes for physical damage and applying frostbite. Are we absolutely sure that this is what happens? We are. Yeah, then he does it all again. So he turns around, moves in there, and he will attack all that. Yeah, he will attack that. So I will move there <clears throat> to avoid his damage. Hopefully this, what I've just done, again, is legal. So please let me know, Rowley, help me out. Help me understand the positioning and movement. 
I will I will do do my homework as well just to make sure that I can choose the the the, the node that I get pushed to because um, does it say that he pushes me away or into any other direction? If anyways, guys, if I play this wrong, I'll play it all again. Even if I win, if I lose, it doesn't matter. All right. If that's wrong, we'll do it all again to make it fair. All right. At least uh, you know. To be honest with you, I'm having a lot of fun doing that. So, <clears throat> aggro token to our warrior. Now, where is the weak spot? The weak spot is on the other side. It's this one. So we move in for one. We position ourselves right over there. And we begin our flurry of attacks with our battle axe. We attack for five. Minus two is three. So, oh, we went through the threshold. Now it's 12. But uh, he will heat up as soon as I finish. So... Forgot to refresh two. I spent the two for the shield. Okay, we attack again. It is three plus one for the titanite shard. It's four, two is blocked. So we reduce his health points all the way to 10. Now I'm not going to um, spend another three for the cestus. And I don't think it was a, such, a, such a great upgrade, to be honest with you. Because... Uh, it spends a lot of stamina and I hardly ever use it. So, hmm, hmm. Okay, so now we went through his heat up threshold. So, what happens now is that he has three um, heat up cards. Uh, let me shuffle them. Pick one, I don't know, this one. Okay, we add it to the deck. And we shuffle the entire deck all over again. So even if we remember the cycle, the sequence in which he was activating, it's gone now. Plus, we have a more difficult behavior card inside. So <clears throat> it's his turn now. And it is a sweeping strike, something that we've seen before. Okay, so what he's going to do, he's going to... Activate and attack these nodes to his front, to his left, and to his rear, including there. We're not on that spot, spot we came from that direction, so we do not get hit. But now what he does, he will push us out, say here. And he will retreat to be one space away from us. Okay, so that's what happens. Now the aggro token goes to our cleric. She doesn't have a frostbite. Have I missed any frostbites? Hmm. I don't think I have. So maybe I should run in. This is his weak spot one stamina yeah let's do it for one stamina i position myself there so one stamina then i spent three stamina to activate my mace i actually uh, it's too late now okay so three dice oh no Okay, three dice, I, uh, he def de defended that, but I will use my chime for no stamina to heal that damage because this is two spaces away. So uh, that's, that's, that's a legal move. All right, so there we go. Backhand flashes, okay, he will do it twice. So he will move towards the, he ah, and I use this, so I flip the aggro token to a warrior. Anyways, so he will uh, target the closest enemy, um, well, enemy, hero, and he will move one and push them out. So he pushes me out like that for free. Then he turns around towards me, moves in there, pushes me out like so, 
and attacks his front and left arc. So, I like that, including this. Uh, and he applies frostbite, but nobody got hurt. So he will do it again. Turns around. Moves like that. Okay. And then he will attack his front and left. So I want to get pushed over there, if that's legal. <clears throat> okay. So... <clears throat> I just I will I will as soon as we stop this video I'll look up the push rules because if that's not correct then we'll have to redo the whole fight. Anyways, he attacks um, this node, these two nodes, and the ones over there. So he doesn't attack anybody and does not apply <clears throat> and does not apply frostbite. Okay. So it's now our warrior's turn. And which arc is his weakest? It's this one. Okay, so we heal two stamina points. We could go for zero, for one, for two stamina points in here. Okay, two stamina points. Attack with our battle axe. We attack for four, okay, two is blocked, we reduce him down to eight. Shall we risk it with a shield? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. You know what? We'll go for it completely. Look at that. Whoop. Okay, we attack for three plus one is four, so two damage. That is six. And I'll do it like this, look. I will spend another three stamina points to attack with my Cestus without taking it out of my uh, backpack. And I attack for, for another four, bringing him down to two. We'll drink my Estus flask. Okay, my Estus flask, like that. And that is the end of my activation. So now. It's his revenge. Oh yeah, this is Frost Breath. Zero towards the closest. Zero towards the closest. So does it mean that he turns around? Hmm, I think it does. What, what does that mean? Because one means that he moves forward. Zero. Well, he stays in place, so what's the point of that icon anyway? Unless he just... but then there's a special icon for to tell us that he needs to turn around. I don't quite get that, because he's the closest. So zero towards the closest. What does that mean? I think it means that he just turns around. think so. That's how I'm going to play it. Okay, so he turns around like so. I was here and he attacks three nodes. The one in the front, so basically one like that. So all these nodes are attacked with his frost breath. I, I was going to say fire breath. Frost Breath, of course, for six magical damage. Ooh. So we will begin with a cleric who defends with uh, one blue and one black. Three. So three damage goes through. Okay. And our, our warrior now. <clears throat> oh no. Entire six. I could have tried our dodge to be honest too late now six damage goes through thankfully there's no repeat icon on there on there so it's a cleric now a cleric heals too she's got her chime equipped i think she will move one ah hang on no 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 
this is what we keep forgetting. So she spends the one for moving. No, I don't think we want to do that. Okay, but we need to heal our body here. And if we spend the three, hmm, no, we will use our uh, keep the faith um, hero action that allows us to heal for two all heroes within one range. Um, so we'll do it like that. Uh -huh. And then we will use our chime to heal one free of charge. And then we will move one like so. Okay, oh, not here. Do. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I got too excited, you know. It's just so close. Two health points remaining. And if I play it right, it'll be, you know, a nice victory. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now it's the Boreal Knight's activation, Chilling Thrust. Okay, so what he does, she needs to get rid of that. What he does, he just turns around, like so, pushes him out, like so, and moves one, moves two, and pushes her out, say there, and attacks her with four magical damage and applies <clears throat> and applies frostbite. Thankfully she defends with a blue and black against magical defense and it's five so no damage goes through and his weak spot is the one at the rear. Alright so now it's our warriors turn if I'm not mistaken. Okay come on are we going to risk it though? Yeah, I think we will. I think we will use, it's time to use a Berserk Charge. Once per spark, during his activation, the warrior may move one node without spending stamina. The next range zero attack he makes costs zero stamina. So what I'm going to do is, is like this. I'm going to spend one stamina. Okay, then I will activate my hero ability to move in at the back and use Cestus because it requires free stamina and I will use it free of charge. All right, so we're looking for four. Nope, two damage, two damage is blocked. Okay, so we're going all in, right? We're attacking with battle axe for no stamina. Wow, yep. <laughs> Two damage is blocked, two goes through, and Mr. Boreal outright the knight is defeated. <laughs> you die. Woo! Fantastic! So, that's brilliant. Uh, we get the spoils of war. Okay, and if I defeat the boss... Right. How many souls do I get? I suppose I get two souls, if I recall correctly, and all his items. Right. <clears throat> He's got three items. Outrider armor. Fantastic stuff. It makes you immune to frostbite. Oh yeah, we could have used that. Fighting you, mate. So 24 decks and 24 faith. Our yeah, we're not that far away from that. Irithyll straight sword. Oh, that's nice. 23 strength. So just one over there. And 23 int. Not far. Nice. Well, one, one hander. That would be a fantastic upgrade. Both for both of these. But Dex for, for her, Dex is over there. And int also here, so two, six, ten. All right, and irithyll rapier. 
24 dex again and 24 int again. Wow, so just one upgrade and I can go for the rapier which gives me frostbite. Yeah, upgrades. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, and two souls, yeah? For defeating her. All right, I think we'll um, end our episode here. Uh, I have three points I need to check if I made, um, you know, and if I played correctly. If I haven't, then we'll do it again. And if I did, way! I'm so excited to have defeated um, the um, Boreal Outrider Knight. And now we're on our way to our main boss. I'm still thinking about the boss we're going to, um, to be going after. Uh, we'll discuss that uh, on the next episode. So thank you very much for watching. I've enjoyed it immensely. It's a fantastic implementation of AI cards and positioning and arcs and everything. It, it's easy to make a mistake, especially for a newbie like me. However, I've had so much fun. Absolutely fantastic. Can't wait to face uh, other mini and main bosses, not to mention the mega bosses. So far, I think I have one or two mega bosses in my collection, but I'm looking forward to expanding even further. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you shortly in the next episode. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.